ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في الكتاب الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال سبحانه وتعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وقال سبحانه وتعالى ان الله هو ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين امين اما بعد وبيجن ان نيم اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى وبيجن باي بريزينغ هيم باي جلوريفاينغ هيم وي اسك الله سبحانه وتعالى تو سند بيس اند بلسينغز اوبن اور بيلوفد بروفيت محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower this gathering with his mercy and make it a source of benefit for us this gathering in dunya and akhirah say ameen alhamdulillah alhamdulillah rabbil alameen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran laqad karamna bani adam and we have honored the children of adam and our, you know when you look at these ayat in which you want to understand how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored the human being you find there is many things it started in the time of Adam alayhi salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam alayhi salam the names and he presented them to the angels <coughs> and he said tell me the names of angels and the angels they couldn't tell the names but Adam alayhi salam a human being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him knowledge Ar-Rahman allama al-Qur'an Allah gave the human beings the Qur'an Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us ability to see and ability to hear and it says in the Quran he also gave you clothing clothing to 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 give you beautification and also to give you honor and so when you when you look at this this karam this great honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to human beings and you see why people are worshiping Allah you find that some people are are doing business transaction and so you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran if you do certain amount of good deeds Allah will give you certain things Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said for example whoever prays 12 rakahs extra sunnah prayers every day Allah will build for them a what a, a palace in jannah 12 rakahs and these are the sunnah rakah the prayers and so at the young age a believer is given this motivation you know there is a place called jahannam a hell fire and there is a place called jannah and these are realities that's true rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say allahumma anta al haqq wa wa liqauk wa qawluka haqq wa liqauka haqq wa jannatu haqq wa nar haqq oh allah you are true in other words believing in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is based on the truth and the meeting with allah is also true and he said jannah is true and hell fire is what true right and so at a young age a believer starts to learn about these realities that wait a second my life is not confined into this world alone that this moment that i'm living in is always changing and today is going to pass another day is going to come another day is going to come and as this time moves i have to make benefit and use of this time otherwise i will lose the benefit of this time and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wal asr inna al insana la fi khusr he swears by time that human beings are losing means they're not using their time they're not benefiting from their time except those who believe and do righteous deeds so believers they have iman that wait a second i'm here to do something i'm here on a mission i'm here with a purpose and so they recognize their reality their purpose and they try to attain the pleasure of allah and at first it's for a reason they're motivated either because they're running away from jahannam i don't want to go to jahannam inna hu kana sa'at mustaqarra wa muqa'ama allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the people of iman ibadur rahman they make dua say ya allah i don't want jahannam it's a horrible place to be for a short time or a long time. It doesn't matter. I don't want to see it. And so they will do whatever it takes to avoid Jahannam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala motivates them very well by describing Jahannam. 
you know, يَتُوفُ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ حَمِيمِ الْآمِ The people there that are they're, they're running between fire and, and the burning, you know, pus and, and their skins burn and they keep replenishing so they can just keep feeling the pain and so as Allah is describing this adab people are like, oh my God, I don't want to deal with this you know, I can't even put my hand on a candle who can, who can handle Jahannam? where the, the lowest of the torment in Jahannam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa described is you'll have a charcoal under your feet and the brain will boil. Who can handle that? Anybody want that kind of reality, that kind of experience? No, we don't want that. So some people, they're, they're scared from this and they say, Allah, I don't want to experience this. So what do I have to do? Okay, don't lie. Don't commit this, don't commit that. Don't cheat other people, don't hurt others. If you cannot benefit, then don't avoid harming others. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the principles in our deen is to prevent harm is actually more valuable than to bring benefit. To prevent harm is more valuable than to bring benefit. I'll give you a modern day example. Somebody wants to be healthy, right? So they start taking vitamins. Vitamins bring what? Benefit. So they want to take vitamins, but before they take vitamins, they have to stop eating all the junk food. If you keep on eating junk food and living unhealthy lifestyle that's bringing harm, the benefit's not going to do much. So you have to prevent harm before you do what? Bring benefit. And this is the, the lowest stage. And then our ulama, they, they mentioned that when a person is motivated by this, they're driven by fear. And this fear is also part of recognition of the maqam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is there by the mercy of Allah. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about hellfire? Some people ask. If He's the most merciful, why did He create hellfire? He created it to make some people move towards Jannah. Because if He doesn't say that, some people will say, Ah, Allah ghafoor rahim I'll do whatever I want. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the surah Ar-Rahman, He describes Jahannam. And then what? Somebody gets scared. He says, وَمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّةً Oh, if you got scared, you have two jannas. Don't worry, don't get scared. The purpose of the Quran is not to make you scared. إِلَّا تَذْكِرَةً لِمَنْ يَخْشَى Its purpose is to, to bring consolation, to bring tranquility and peace to the ones who got scared. Because naturally in our world, our, our, you know, they said, the psychologists, they mentioned, human beings, by nature, they're scared. Why are they scared? Because the future is unknown. You can't trust the people around you. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know where your risk is going to come from. You might think this terrible thing might happen. There might be an earthquake, a volcano, or whatever, a tornado. So we always have these concerns and fears. So people are naturally scared. And if they don't care, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, well, there's, you should, if you don't see anything to worry about, there's the day of judgment, there is Jahannam, you should be scared. Right? And if you're already scared, Allah says, don't be scared. This is for you to find tranquility, to find peace. Okay, you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you turn and you start avoiding harm. Means you avoid hellfire. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made certain things haram? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make Jahannam haram. Jahannam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it haram for the believers. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, on the day of judgment, a believer will be crossing the sirat, and the Jahannam will call out to him, say, oh mu'min, move quickly because your nur is putting out my light. My, my fire. Your light is going to put out the fire of Jahannam. Allah Akbar. And so, when you have iman, then you say, okay, Jah Jahannam is true. Jannah is also true. فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا أَنِ النَّارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, whoever is driven away from Jahannam and is brought into Jannah, they are successful. Right? And so they're brought into Jannah. Means what? Now Jannah has its own, you know, beauties and its own things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi described. He said, Jannah has things no eye has ever seen, no, no ear has ever heard, no mind has ever imagined. Right? And, and the Prophet ﷺ, he described every, in Jannah, every moment is better than the moment before. A husband and a wife, every time they turn around and look at each other, they're more handsome and more beautiful than before. And they can come to each other in different forms. The essence is the same. You can choose whatever you form you want. Whatever is pleasing to you. And whatever you want is there for you. And you know, the Qur'an describes Jannah also. 
And, and you might wonder, why describe Jahannam and Jannah? And in so many places repeated, every page you turn to, there's a description of something about Jannah and Jahannam. Because this is something for you to reflect upon, to contemplate, to meditate upon. Um, uh, Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, if I saw Jannah in front of my eyes, and I saw Jahannam in front of my eyes, I would not change a single thing about my behavior. Means what? He's already living as though he sees Jannah in front of his eyes and Jahannam in front of his eyes. Because he uses the capacity, the khayal, the imagination that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. And that power is within every one of us. Right? When you can make Jannah real. And I'll tell you an experience I had. You know, I used to teach uh, Saturday school. And one time we decided we're going to do a meditation and think about the day of judgment in Jannah and hellfire and all these things. So I had... You know, the students close their eyes and I'm describing. You know, imagine now it's the Day of Judgment. And people are being gathered and now your, your, your angels are showing you to the gates of Jannah. And they're all like, they have their hands on the ta table, they're all, their mouth wide open, they're, they're imagining what I'm describing. And it said the gate of Jannah is so wide, you can walk, run from one frame to the other for 500 years, you will not reach its, the other frame. And then people are coming in droves and the angels are greeting them. You know, udkhuluha bi salamin amineen. Enter in peace, in a state of tranquility. And, and the angels are guiding you to your places. And then as I start describing, describing, I, I stop for a moment and I said, let their imagination take over. There's one student, I will never forget this experience. He was standing there and suddenly like tears start rolling from his eyes. Everybody else, I said, all right, come back now. Everybody's back. And like, whoa, what was that? That was amazing. What did you do to us? One guy in the back, he didn't come out. He was in a state of trance. Think like, I don't know where he went. And then I see he's crying. I said, oh my God, I broke him. Right? I did something, I don't know. I'm not a psychologist. I broke him. And he comes out and goes, what did you do to me? I said, well, what happened? He said, I was with you. When you're describing coming to the gates of Jannah and all these things and the angels. And then he said, I saw my grandfather. He said, I remember him. He used to play with me when I was young. He used to have a patch over his eye. He had an eye injury. But he looked young and he looked healthy. And he said, he came to the angel. He said, don't worry, I'll take over from here. And he took me to my, to my place. And he was showing me around. He said, and I saw two people come to me. He said, they look like me. And one of them, they introduced themselves as my brothers. The brother, his name is Abdul Qadr. I remember this brother. He said, they introduced himself as my brothers. I never knew him, I never met them. He said, then we went to a room and they opened the door and there was Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> he said, I, that's when I started crying. So, okay. And I said, okay, that's great. You know, I said, this brother has a wild imagination. May Allah bless him. He goes home and he tells his experience to his mother. And his mother starts crying. And she said, he says, what happened? He said, she says, I had two miscarriages before you. Two boys I had lost. And you saw them, introduced himself as, as your brothers. And he didn't know about this. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give you a glimpse of these realities. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Jannah is what? True. What? Jahannam is true. The meeting with Allah is true. And so our ulama, they said, if you look at the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the different levels of success. Whoever is saved from the hellfire is successful. Right? And then another place he says, ذلك, you know, ذلك فوز المبين. If you're saved from Jahannam, this is clear victory. And then what happens? If you enter Jannah, ذلك فوز الكبير. This is a, a big victory. This is a big success. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرِضْوَانُ مِنَ اللَّهِ ذلك أكبر. ذلك فوز عظيم. ذلك هو الفوز العظيم. And the pleasure of Allah, the presence, the meeting with Allah, witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the highest success. And this is the greatest victory anybody can attain. As our ulama said, people worship Allah for many different reasons. Some people want to be saved from Jahannam. Allah will save them from Jahannam. But their, their deeds are, are, are the, the transactions. You know, it's the ibadah of the tujjah. And Allah honored you and made you human being, gave you language, gave you wahi, all of these things. It's not befitting that you stay as a tajr with Allah. Always negotiating. Ya Allah, I'll do this and you give me that, okay? No problem. Ya Allah, I, 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 would, I, I like this girl, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask her out so you can make, give, you know, protect me from Jahannam, okay? No problem. This is tijara, this is business, transaction. I'll do this, you do this for me. I'll do that, you do this for me. That's fine, that's not a problem. But that's a very 
immature level of Iman. As you rise above that, our ulama they said, then you start to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you recognize who's Allah. And because you, you understand that all of reality in front of you is from Him. And that you won't be able to turn your face except you're in a state of witnessing. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَيْنَمَا تَوَلُّوا Wherever you turn, فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهُ You find Allah's face in front of you. You know, and when the servants ask about Allah, He says, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am close. And He says, وَهُوَ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ هَبْلِ الْوَلِ And He's قَرِيبٌ and He's أَقْرَبُ He's closer. And so, there is a hadith by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He saw Isa alayhi wa He said, Isa alayhi wa sallam, He was walking by. He saw a group of worshippers and their skins had shriveled up and they looked very unhealthy. He said, who are you people? They said, we are worshippers of Allah. He has threatened us with Jahannam and we have gotten scared. So we worship Him to avoid that fate. Yes, he left him alone. And he kept on moving. He saw another group of people worshipping Allah. And they looked more healthy. And they looked more cheerful. And he said, who are you people? He said, we are people who are, who are worshippers of Allah. Allah enticed us with his Jannah. We want to meet Hur al-Ain. We want to eat from the fruits of Jannah. We want to drink from its rivers. So we are worshipping Allah. And he, he left him alone. He said, you're doing great. And then he came across a third group of worshippers. He said, who are you people? They said, we are worshippers of Allah. Allah has made himself known to us. And we have fallen in love with him. We have fallen in love with him. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for each one there is darajah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Insan, that there are people who will, do, who will do righteous deeds. They will feed the poor, they will do whatever, everything they do. But their intention is not for this or that. Their intention is for Allah. إِنَّمَا نُتْعَمُكُمْ For what? لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ For the face of Allah. Right? But whoever does things for the Akhara, إِنَّ سَعِيَكُمْ مَشْكُورَ Whatever effort you put, it's appreciated. If you work for the Akhara, it's appreciated. If you work for the dunya, He says, I'll give you some of the dunya. No problem. Whatever you want, I'll give you. And, and as believers, we believe one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Kareem. Al-Kareem means what? The one who is the exceedingly generous, the constantly generous one. And, and our, our, our people of Allah, they said, it is unbecoming of Allah's generosity that when His servants want something from Him, He withholds it from them. <coughs> Whatever you want will come to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's generosity is guaranteed. Ya ayyuhal insan, he said, Ma gharraka bi rabbika kareem. Oh human being, what has turned you away from your Lord who is al kareem? Wa atakum min kulli ma sa'altumu. And he give you from whatever, all the things that you ask for. Wa in tu'iddu ni'mat allahi. And then if you try to count his blessings, you cannot enumerate, you can't count them. So our, our teachers, they said, Whatever you ask from Allah, you, He will give it to you. And sometimes the asking can be with the words, Ya Allah, I want this. Sometimes it can be just with your state. Muhammad Sallallahu when he used to pray in, in, in Mecca, he used to place the Kaaba between him and Jerusalem. And when he moved to Medina, the Kaaba, he had to turn his back. And this was a test to the believers that, you know, are you following Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he's from your heritage? He faces the Kaaba, are you following him because he's Rasulullah? And when they had to turn their back to their heritage and turn their back to the Kaaba and face Jerusalem, this was a test for them. They passed. But Rasulullah, he looked up in the sky and Allah said, Qad nara wajhaka fis sama. We, we saw you looking up at the sky. He didn't say anything out of Adam, but his heart was making dua. Your heart is making dua every second, every moment. You're, there are some duas, there's no words. It just comes straight from your soul. And this is called dua al-hal. This is the dua of the state that the person is in. And Rasulullah so just looked up and Allah said, We have changed the qibla to make you happy. La'allaka tarda. To make you happy. We have changed the qibla to what will please you. And what happened? The people that recognize he's Rasulullah, but they denied him, now they have a problem. They say, how come he turned away from his qibla? Like, what's going on? Right? And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you whatever you desire. So want for the highest and the best. 
And our, our teachers have said, if you, if, if you want to know the reality of why you are created, you are created for Allah. So ask for Allah Himself. And you will get past Jannah and all of that. You, you, you will go to the highest levels. And Rasulullah Sallallahu when he was being elevated and he was being ascended, his, his eyes didn't waver. He only wanted Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And so he arrived. وَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَى To the Divine Presence so close, equal to two bow's lengths, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala or even closer. And so there is a secret discourse that happens. فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ فَأَوْحَى He revealed to his servant whatever he revealed to him. That discourse is happening with every single heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing things to every single heart. Not at the level of the prophets, but at your level. And if you want to aim higher, you can be elevated higher. And you want to aim higher, you can be elevated higher. And you can keep on doing and Allah will keep on rewarding. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, As long as you don't get tired, Allah will not get tired of giving you rewards. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Allah himself. أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. so the differences can be very subtle right somebody says يا الله give me a car يا الله give me a new job Ya Allah, give me a new wife, whatever. Right? You can, you can make dua. And when you make dua, you could want whatever you're asking for. And that's why you're making dua. Or you can make dua because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ud'uni, call upon me. So somebody makes a dua and they want that thing they're asking for. And others, they make dua out of adab because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ask me and I'll give you. And so they're making dua because they want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Same action, but the intention is what? Different. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in both of those cases will re respond to the dua. And a person, one time, one of the sahaba, he got sick. And, and he stayed in his home. He didn't come to the masjid for many days. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came and visited him. And he saw that there was a renovation that they did. He had cut open the wall and created a mirror, a window for himself. He said, what is this? He said, I asked my son to, to cut the wall open and make a window so I can have fresh air. He said, have you made the intention so that you could hear Bilal calling the other? That wall, that window, as long as it's there, it would have been written for you as, as Hasanah. True or not? But it's so, so at the end of it, what you desire, you will live out your life like everybody else. And you will have the Qada and the Qadr will hit you and miss you and all that stuff will happen. But... What's happening inside will distinguish and separate one from the other. And then conclude with this, Abu Bakr radiallahu one time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Who went to visit the sick today? Abu Bakr said, me, I did, Ya Rasulullah. Who did this today? Me, I did, Ya Rasulullah. Who did this today? Me, I did. Who gave sadaqah? Me, Ya Rasulullah. And the sahab are watching, okay, we can't compete with Abu Bakr. And they're thinking it's because of his actions. No, the actions are created by Allah. Wallahu khalaqakum. Allah, He created you and all of your actions. Right? It's not because of the actions. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr has the status that he has with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Not because of his deeds, but because of what is in his heart. What is in his heart. And so if you forget everything I said today, go back to your hearts. And bring your heart back to connection and the, the beautiful relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And desire Him alone and nothing else. Whoever wants Allah alone, Allah will suffice them. Whoever mixes that with this or that in dunya or akhira, this is other things, you know. And, and it, it's a lower level of iman. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to perfect for us our iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to revive our hearts. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us peace and happiness in dunya and akhira, in our hearts, in our homes, in our families. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite our hearts, keep the shayateen far away from us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who love one another for his sake, who spend on one another for his sake, who are patient and, and, and forbearant with one another for his sake. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to resurrect us on the day of judgment upon pulpits of light amongst those who are under the shade of his throne and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enter all of us hand in hand into the highest levels of Jannah and grant us the rizq 
to, to, to gaze upon his face and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of us and all of our loved ones from Jahannam. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alayhi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa akhirat dawana and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Allahu Akbar.